you're just teaching to one type of student, you're, gonna, you're not going to be very successful. You're, you're trying to reach as many kids as possible at the same time. It's my goal every year as a teacher to try and figure out different strategies to use. A teacher that was retired once told me, kids don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Get to know the kids, get to know their backgrounds. I think the more you, you become familiar with them as, as people and as learners, the better you off you are. There's different kids every year, and so you'll, you can never be comfortable with where with where you're at as a teacher, you have to just continue to learn different strategies. You, you need to be really aware of, of where the kids are coming from. What I've done in my classroom uh, for multicultural is that because I teach world history, I wanted to bring into the classroom uh, an awareness and understanding of cultures throughout the world. So every month I've tried to look for an activity or a holiday that is celebrated in a country, like Cinco de Mayo. One of the things that I try to do in my, my class is to um, do an oral history project. And we usually take the whole quarter. Uh, we'll spend a few weeks learning how to uh, interview. The kids usually interview their grandparents or other kupuna in the community. We'll have students that will research it and uh, present it to the classroom with different activities, greetings, and singing. And we'll try to have activities in countries that encompass all cultures in the classroom. In word problems, I kind of try to ensure that it's something that's relevant to our kids in Hawaii. For example, there's been word problems about um, ski slopes, uh, finding the elevation and um, the rise and the run of a ski slope, which a lot of kids didn't really understand because they've never been skiing before. So I try to keep the word problems to be relevant to our culture here. Um, surfing, for example, would be a good one that the kids can relate to and see. They're able to learn more about their, their family history. Uh, we learn a lot about the plantation uh, history here on Kauai. And um, they, they get to know their grandparents and others in the community. And, and by sharing with each other, uh, they're really able to learn a lot about cultural diversity. Uh, here, not only here in Hawaii, but especially uh, here on Kauai. When I think of uh, multi-instructional strategies and, and teaching, the word that jumps out at me is differentiation. What I did is factoring in the regular algebra traditional way is very it's arithmetic and writing out is very step by step. So a lot of kids have a really hard time with that. And so another strategy that I use is a manipulative called um, algebra tiles. And it's a way that kids can actually use pictures rather than variables and stuff to help them to be able to factor and meet that benchmark in the classroom. So one strategy that I've found to have worked for my classroom is uh, project-based. Um, these uh, allow a student an opportunity to present in different forms of what they've learned in the semester. So you're trying to engage each of the kids. Some kids come into the classroom, they're verbal learners, so they, you try to do a lot of discussion with them. Um, they talk a lot, so you try to you know, get them to share things with other kids. You got a lot of kinesthetic learners, I think, especially at the middle school level. So you want to try to do a lot of hands-on activities. You know, they, they're, they get engaged with games, with hands-on projects moving around the classroom. Sometimes you need to even go outside. And then, and then of course, you've always got those kids who are visual, spatial. Um, they like to do the artistic posters and, and, and things, you know, so that you can... I think the key is trying to allow each of those kids to be successful and, and feel confident in what they're doing. I've used technology quite a bit in the last couple of years. I'm one of three teachers that have a smart board uh, in the classroom. And I've noticed a tremendous uh, growth and more interaction with my students using a smart board. Some of the strategies that I use is graphing calculators. Um, the kids become familiar with, we used um, TI-84s in here, which is a graphing calculator. So they're able to use that a lot in graph um, parabolas and lines. The Discovery Channel has a, has a little section in their, their company called Discovery Education and it, they actually have an online database 
uh, of just different uh, video clips and videos for a variety of topics. So as far as, it, as, far as it, English goes, you know, they have topics on, on everything, literature, writing, uh, communication. And you can find specific video clips to address certain lessons. And so I've, I've noticed that the students get very engaged when I use those. It, it helps to reinforce what we're, what we're covering and, and they can see it, you know, on the screen. I try to include um, a lot of t uh, video clips from youth uh, teacher too. There's a lot of good resources there. Of, um, so the kids are aware that there's a lot of things that they can use online. I've, I found this great program uh, called Achieve 3000 and it's, a, it's an online reading uh, response program where the students can go online and it's kind of set up in an email format. They receive a daily email with, with a, a reading selection, an article where they read and they answer certain questions and they're also able to respond and write um, open-ended responses to their reading. It's, it's great. Um, they've, it's been proven to really help them improve their reading and, and it's something that they can do at home. They can do it you know, on their own time and I think the, the key thing is that it's engaging for them because it's kind of in line with, with how they learn and how they think they're plugged into you know, computers and email and chat. So it's kind of set up to you know, help them uh, do their assignments in that way. I've also had portions of my classes that are online. Um, as an online instructor for Kapaa High School, I've been able to put parts of my course as practice and so students that have been sick or absent have been able to um, access the classes and work online that has allowed them to keep up with the classroom. You know students nowadays, you know, they Twitter, they text message, they're on their cell phones, they're downloading video clips, and so everything in, ch in um, education is changing slowly to integrate technology into the classroom.